Good afternoon, listening public, um, persons who are listening to ZIZ radio, TV, online media. I would just like to say that indeed it gives me great honor and privilege to be able to present um, this afternoon at the NEOC daily briefing. I must first say thank you very much to Mr. Abdiya Samuel who extended invitation for me to join the NEOC just about 42 days ago since the activation. And equally, I would like to thank the Honorable Vincent Byron, who is also the Minister for the Ministry of Justice, Legal Affairs, and Communications. Now, when we look at COVID-19, certainly this pandemic has brought very severe consequences um, to us as a nation, as well as to the global society on a whole. We have heard a lot of the negative impacts of COVID-19. We had a number of deaths reported worldwide, and uh, we are inspired by the recoveries that we are seeing worldwide and also within our federation. And uh, at the last count, I noted that there was one person who is still active in terms of the COVID case. And uh, I am reassured that soon we may be hearing that we have zero active cases. Now on the positive side, I must say that when it comes to technology, COVID-19 has certainly accelerated a digital transformation, and that is why I wish to title my presentation this afternoon as COVID-19 Accelerating Digital Transformation, Go SKN, that is Go Sink It's a Nevis. Resilient leadership is required. Responding to COVID-19 and beyond. So permit me just to highlight some of the digital tools that have been utilized by the NEOC and HEOC during the course of the COVID-19 pandemic over the past 42 days. Now, persons would have heard Dr. Laws referred to almost every day, covid19.gov.kn. And I'm pleased to say that through working with the HEOC, uh, Dr. Laws and her team at the Ministry of Health, as well as the team at the Department of Technology, we were able to develop and host and manage the covid19.gov.can website. So there we see one example of the use of technology during this pandemic. On the website, you would also find sections relating to statistics and Constantly, we would hear about the need to flatten in the curve and having a straight line. When we look at the statistics, the local cases, the graphs would show you the curve bending and flattening as we have now reduced the number of active cases. When it comes to collaboration and communication tools, we recognize that given that we cannot always be in the same place, working as we did before COVID-19, we have to utilize the technology. We have to utilize collaborative tools, such as Zoom uh, and uh, Microsoft Teams, for example. We've noted that it is not just the NEOC, the HEOC, or government have been utilizing such platforms. We have seen uh, the use of such platforms by the churches, by businesses, by different entities where they may not have learned a lot about technology before, but now they are thrust into it. Mobile app development is another area of technology where we have seen <coughs> booming. We have seen Nevis launching a mobile app and equally saying kids too will be developing an app for quarantine as well in partnership with the Taiwan Embassy. Cloud computing, another emergent technology 
we have also been utilizing for hosting as well. Graphic design technology. So you would have seen the, the daily situation report in graphic rendition. You would have seen maps of seeing it's in 3D. So this is use of technology that's been developed locally by local persons. And you see a demonstration of the talents that we have in technology. Data analytics. Data analytics is really driving decision making, not only for government, but also for businesses, as we would have seen when we have lockdown and partial lockdown sessions, we are persons would have to go out and they would do shopping, etc. The supermarkets can actually track buying habits and restock accordingly. Geospatial data. Geospatial data or GIS mapping data is also utilized as well. Decisions being made about zoning, all those have been taken into consideration. 3D printing. Just to share with you that as part of the Department of Technology, we do have an innovation and training unit. And the innovation unit has been experimenting on the use of 3D printing for straps, bands that we can use for face masks, face shield, and to look at a more progressive approach in utilizing technology during this time. Robotics is also another area that we have been doing some research. So we are hoping that in the medium to long-term future, we can see the use of robotics even in the health industry and manufacturing locally where we can assist, especially if we have pandemics and outbreaks where we cannot risk the lives of our nurses and medical professionals, where we can now introduce technology through use of robotics. Just to put things into perspective, uh, just to note that the government of St. Kitts and Nevis has a digital transformation strategy. And Mr. Bratcher would have alluded to some of the areas, in particular the online payment gateway or platform. But I'll just take a few moments to guide you through some of the areas of this strategy that are relevant to us at this time and going forward. The need to strengthen the broadband infrastructure. As we note that internet connectivity is a critical resource right now. Without that internet connectivity, we would not be able to do work from home and even be able to render this broadcast to you live. And so we applaud the collaboration of the telecom companies within St. Kitts and Nevis. Flo, did you sell the cable? For coming on board and seeking to extend and build and strengthen our internet capacities throughout the different communities. Then we look at a multi-layered sustainable cybersecurity program. Now it is critical to note that during this time with COVID-19, Everybody is connected online, and also the hackers are connected online. And so it is also a great opportunity for them to, to use the time and their talent to be able to hack into personal systems. It is at this time that we are really calling upon the businesses and also the government departments to look to strengthen their cybersecurity programs to ensure that the systems that they deploy within their companies, their organizations, are secured and consistently updated. Digital legal framework is so critical. Every time there is a need for us to draft regulations, it is important to be able to consider the implications and therefore the rapid development of the legal framework is important. Information and data management framework. Everything is now based on data and information and guiding the way we move, the way we decide what to do and our decision-making process. Digitization of government services. So we are seeing more and more of our government services being digitized. 
And on the next slide, I would share with you more detail of some of those areas. What we find emerging is an ecosystem of innovators, of entrepreneurs who are inspired during this time of crisis to be able to come up with creative solutions, ready not just for the local market, but also ready for export. And so we are hoping to see that even though persons would have lost their jobs through the, the current pandemic, the downturn in the ministries of, of tourism and the tourism sector, we are looking forward to have new areas uh, built out of our technology industry to be able to feed in to some of those areas and really in, instill in new skilling and upskilling of our persons in the Federation. E-commerce and online shopping. We would have seen a fast track of the e-commerce where we were planning to have e-commerce roll out within a year. I can see it roll out in three to six months. And even in some areas, it was done in two weeks. So we can see a progressive move of acceleration of digital transformation. As we highlight in the next slide, where we look at a breakout of the clients, channels, and government, we can see over time, the government will be building out more and more of its services online to be able to allow its citizens, businesses, and visitors to interact with government through social media, web portal, and through mobile. And as we see, we would have had the ITMS system through the Accountants General Department, where staff was able to ensure that salaries were being paid from where they were working, working at home. We can see that for education, education now have their website and we are facilitating them as well, where they can communicate with the parents and the students as well. E-agriculture, we want to move forward where agriculture, farming, fishing can go through the agriculture department and then have an online presence where persons can be able to purchase goods online. We have EIRD, Inland Revenue Services, uh, more or less 80 to 90% online. Vehicle registration, persons can do vehicle registration. In the legal area, we can see e-litigation. E-litigation where court matters at the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court level can be heard and you can have the submission of the files done electronically. You have a crime management system being worked out through the police. E-laws, we now have our laws online. And coming on stream in the near future will be the digitization of the land registry. So we can see that government is indeed moving forward with a digital agenda and ensuring that we can function during these times. Now, as I move into my final set of slides, I just want to reiterate the importance of ensuring that cybersecurity is certainly the top priority along with COVID-19 because we note that as you go through, as more and more persons come online, as more persons transact online, there is a tendency that the focus may not be on the security, but just providing the service. And we are concerned that if the necessary securities are not put in place, then there are a number of risks. There are a number of risks where you could have failure of systems, where you could have access to sensitive information, and then we can lead to more economic loss, which we are trying to avoid. And so, Following that, we highlight the employment risk, their infrastructure risk, their business and operational risk, and also information security risk, which persons have to be mindful about. And as I go to my wrap up, 
I would like to highlight that when it comes to security and data protection, secure data and communications of all forms as attackers target people who are working from home. So for the businesses and even government, for those persons who are working remotely, ensure that even the network bandwidth is provided for persons to be able to have access to their networks, their private networks, the private networks of the systems so that they can facilitate online working. Staff training. Before companies and organizations engage in staff working from home, it is important to provide the necessary training that is required to ensure that they can support and continue to work effectively from home. Disaster recovery and business continuity plans are ever so critically important. And we ask that businesses look at their business continuity plan and update it from the lessons they have learned so far on COVID-19 and also preparedness for hurricane season. Cloud workload migration, it helps in terms of providing a redundancy and backup so that public and private sector can leverage cloud-based technologies for remote working and migration so that we could ensure that key systems that we are putting in place are not severely affected to limit continuity. And therefore, I wish to end by saying that resilience is important, resilient leadership. And as we look to respond to COVID-19 and we go through the process of recovery, let us look forward in ways we can continue to strive as a nation and build through prosperity. Thank you very much for listening.